The soda accidentally had the sixth largest military on the planet once. The USA and the USSR spent decades having a healthy neighborly debate about the pros and cons of communism versus capitalism and loudly stockpiling their weapons in case that debate ever got a little bit too heated. Both countries were also carrying out huge propaganda campaigns to convince each other's citizens that their economic model was better. At one point, the CIA spent five years flying Jackson Pollock paintings around Europe to convince people that capitalism produced better art, while the KGB made up flyers to try to start a race war in the states between the Ku Klux Klan, black militant groups, and the Jewish Zionist Defense League. Healthy, neighborly. In 1959, they agreed they to chill out, out a bit, try to understand each other. The USSR opened an expo on Soviet life in New York, while President Eisenhower sent Vice President Richard Nixon to headline a six-week expo on American life in Moscow. Art, technology, cars, the kitchen of the future brought to you by GE. Nixon got into a televised argument with Soviet First Secretary Nikita Khrushchev about whether American kitchen appliances were too complicated. They argued a lot. In general, the Soviets used their expo to show off their space exploration tech and their industry where they were ahead of the Americans. The Americans used their expo to show off dishwashers and soda, like Pepsi. Coca-Cola had turned down participating in the Moscow Expo, but Pepsi jumped at the opportunity. At one point during an argument between Nixon and Khrushchev, the vice president of Pepsi steps in to offer Khrushchev a cup of Pepsi to cool him down. That photo op is priceless advertising for Pepsi. Fast forward to 1972, that Pepsi guy, Donald Kendall, became the president of the company, and Nixon had become the president of the states. Kendall asked Nixon to help set up a deal that would introduce Pepsi into the USSR and give them a monopoly on soda in the country, but Soviet Scruples weren't accepted everywhere. The Soviet government traded state-owned Stolchnia vodka for bottles of Pepsi. Pepsi became the first Western product sold in the Soviet Union, and Pepsi became the exclusive importer of Stolchnia in the States. 17 years later, that deal expired. Pepsi had 20 factories in the USSR, and the rights to Stolchnia were not going to cover the cost of a new trade deal. But remember, the Soviets had spent the entire Cold War building up their military, so to keep Pepsi in the USSR, the government built them a navy worth $3 17 submarines, three diesel warships, a cruiser, a frigate, and a destroyer, plus 10, 10. new Oil, oil tankers. Oil tank. Pepsi ended up selling their fleet to a Swedish scrap recycling company, but for a few days, their 17 submarines made them the sixth largest military force on the planet, ahead of North and South Korea, Turkey, Iraq, and Iran.